Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tech Talks. I am currently in California, right outside of Yosemite National Park, and I thought it would be a good time, uh, it's very, very sunny out, to talk to you about something that is pretty relevant to my tech life. And I, I brought up the sun because it's actually about a solar panel that I've installed on my car. So there's my car right now, and I have a solar panel installed on the top, and I have a battery inside, and an entire system set up, so I figured, I'd let you guys take a little peek inside, see how I've done it, and maybe learn a thing or two. Earlier this year in January, I ended up buying this car. I specifically liked it because I could fold down these back seats and I would have enough room to lay down two people. So if I ever wanted to take a road trip and have a buddy along with me, I would have the opportunity to do so. I can fold these seats down, I can put anything under these panels back here, and we can move anything that we might need back here up to the front seats if we're planning on sleeping. Originally, this car didn't even have roof racks on it. I actually had to find the sidebars on eBay. I bought them, had to drill right into the roof, and then I added those. And then on top of that, I had to buy the crossbars, so I got the crossbars. And then after the crossbars, I finally could install the panel. So I screwed the panel into the crossbars. I drilled a hole through the ceiling and I drilled it right through the antenna. Uh, and that section was basically already there. I put some silicone around it to seal everything up. I accidentally drilled all the way through the ceiling. I was planning on running it through the interior, but this wire is not very flexible. And along with that, I made a hole, so I figured I might as well just go right through there, which it ended up working out pretty well. I use a couple of clips to keep everything pinned down, and that keeps all the wire off to the side. Then I have my charge controller, and the charge controller is simply meant to um, keep the panel at a constant voltage when it comes in uh, to the battery, and it also prevents the battery from being overcharged. Uh, and that gives me a pretty good idea of how much charge I have left in my battery. This is a 100 amp hour battery. I can basically use about half of that. I tend to use maybe one third of it, maybe even a quarter. Uh, it charges up pretty quickly, and all I really end up doing is charging my laptop and maybe my phone once or twice on it. It gives me a lot of flexibility though. And the thing that I like about this is that I can take this anywhere. So my setup right now, we're in the middle of nowhere California, and I have electricity, I have an outlet, uh, two, USB, two outlets and two USB ports in my inverter, which provides so much utility. The charge controller then runs into the battery, which is stored below the surface here. I have the battery hooked up to the inverter directly, and then I drilled a hole in the back, ran the inverter, and I actually had a fuse, so I had to fit the fuse box in, which made the hole slightly bigger. But then I ran the inverter all the way down in under the seating and out through the middle. So I can easily plug in things from the front seat or from the back seats at any point in time. It's very accessible. The panel is a 100 watt panel. I find that after about five hours of direct sunlight, my battery goes from whatever percentage it's at, which is typically above 50% to 100% within five hours. For me, it does a great job. And most of the time I don't use 50%, so it fills up pretty much tips off every time I have sunlight. The panel's on a completely separate circuit, so it doesn't connect to my car in any way, aside for it being attached to the back. If I really wanted to, I guess I could take this big battery out and run it around to the front of the car and give my car a jump start, but I really don't anticipate that happening, but I have the option, I guess, if I wanted to. I've seen a couple of conversions where people have had a switch that they can just flip and it'll connect it to the circuit, so then they could jump it right from there, but I didn't really care about running the extra wiring. This works perfectly for me. Personally, I'd say this battery and the panel are probably overkill, but honestly, it was a pretty affordable system and installing it on my car was a little bit more of a project that I just kind of wanted to mess around with, more so than any sort of really important necessity. I really like the idea though of being able to park my car anywhere, like right now, and have electricity. So I've been very happy with the results that I've seen and uh, that is one of my personal favorite tech pieces of this point in time. Something that I had the opportunity to install myself and, and make it. I, that's, I love it. 
Check the description below for more information about this exact setup. I bought the panel, the wiring, and the charge controller in a little pack, and then I also bought the battery separately. I personally found this system to be perfect and especially overkill for what I have, but if you're interested, feel free to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and also share it with your friends, and I'll be sure to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Tech Talks.